Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we do a lot of primitive either build or hunting videos, and sometimes educational data collection videos, just like this one. So if this is your first time to the channel, do please consider subscribing. Today we're going to talk specifically about how and if motion affects the penetrative qualities of an arrow. This idea in testing was spurred on over the discussion of how it you get better penetrative results on a carcass than a live animal. I've done a lot of carcass testing in years past and as well as shot a lot of live animals while out hunting and one of the things I've noticed is there is a difference in penetration what you can actually expect and it seems that the carcasses generally are easier to penetrate than the animals. Two theories that I've had about that are one, that the animal density is increased when the animal is living and reacting to the shot. So as you see, most of the hunting videos we do, if we actually slow it down, you can see that almost all the animals react to the shot before the animal gets there. So they've heard it, they're already reacting. So instead of being completely relaxed feeding, they now become very tense. Their muscle density is now squeezed. It's in a, it's in a fast twitch motion as they're ducking or already starting to run. And so those muscles are now much harder, more much more dense than they were when it was completely relaxed, especially as it would be in an example of a carcass, a dead animal, where it's not going to twitch the muscle. And along those same lines, the elasticity of the skin and flesh are also affected by the temperature of the animal. As you become, your skin becomes more elastic when you're warm. When everything cools down, you'll see how much easier it gets stiffer. And so, especially if you're doing carcass testing, you know, in say a 50, 60, 70 degree sort of a environment versus an animal that's going to you know have a, a temperature right around 100 degrees you know depending on the animal 102 or whatever uh, that you're going to have a little bit more elasticity which is going to absorb a lot of the energy from the arrow while it's trying to force its way through. Now for the second theory that I had and really wanted to try to test this and that's what we did in this video and that was when the animal actually reacts to the shot and some of them react quite a bit by ducking a significant amount. There's ducking several inches or turning and it's, it's a very quick motion. Well, because the arrow is traveling, it's not just instantaneously there, although it is quite fast. So we have to consider that and we will later. But as the arrow is actually penetrating through, the animal is now starting to move. The arrow hits and the animal which weighs considerably more than the arrow, is moving, taking the arrow off of its trajectory, and could that potentially divert or deflect some of the energy or momentum off of its course to where there's a loss or an absorption of energy that way, or through friction. So of course, to me, the best way to test this, rather than just simply look for formulas and do the math on it is we love the practical application tests. Let's say let's do a rudimentary test and see how it works. And while foam is not a good comparison to flesh, what we're really doing is just testing each individual arrow on a raw penetration test in something that is very homogenous like this foam. It's a great thing to use for basic raw penetration tests on just a versus A, as opposed to all the other variables that you're going to have within an animal, a live animal or a carcass, be it bones, different muscle density, um, you name it, We've organs of different densities. So this way we can keep the density of the target exactly the same. We can shoot over a chronograph. We want to make sure that we're within a two pound or a two feet per second, sorry, a two feet per second window where we only allow for plus one or minus one, so realistically three. So for example, 159 feet per second, 160 feet per second, 161 feet per second. Anything outside of that, we don't use the data and we shoot it again. We wanna make sure that we're very consistent so it's a very comparable test between it. Now we did an arrow that was very heavy. We did an arrow that was 688 grains and then we did another arrow that was 450 grains. Now the arrows weren't made 
even of the same material and of course you're going to have slightly difference or slight differences in the shaft diameter so what we're doing is we're not actually looking at the penetrative data between the light one and the heavy one what we're looking at is the difference within that one arrow okay so if we see start seeing any major differences we can create arrows later on to test if we thought that we needed to that are of the same diameter and we can control all of the arrow variables except for the weight but in this case we're just testing the arrow against itself on a static target versus a moving target uh, both for the light and the heavy because the idea of course is that if the arrow is traveling faster as a, as this target is moving and pivoting if the arrow is traveling faster say with a lighter arrow is it going to get into the target faster before it loses or deflects any of this or absorbs any of this energy um, or is the very heavy arrow that goes very slow although it carries a lot of kinetic energy is it going to be taken off of its path more throughout this moving process or is the increased kinetic energy and momentum from the very heavy arrow going to retain that energy longer and still penetrate better so which is going to be affected more the light arrow hitting it going very fast or the heavy arrow that's going slower but carrying much more uh, kinetic energy and momentum which one if either is going to deflect or absorb I keep saying deflect because I'm talking about the arrow deflecting I don't believe the energy itself deflects as it's going on a single path I'm not a physicist so I'm not really well versed in all of that uh, lingo that they use so bear with me on that kind of stuff so again shooting over the chronograph chronograph to make sure we get an accurate velocity reading and we weighed the arrows the 450 grain arrow and I'll zoom in so you can see some of this stuff a little bit better it's just kind of scratched on the board here uh, we had 450 grain arrow that we were shooting 159 to 161 feet per second so we have 160 feet per second average we did a static test where the target was hanging from a block and tackle rope system that we used later to be able to move it and we hung 60 pounds from the bottom to give it uh, some inertia to prevent the arrow from actually moving the target too much especially during the motion tests whenever we started swinging this and spinning this we wanted to make sure that we didn't have just a very light foam target that the arrow was going to actually stop or impact we wanted it to carry its own momentum the target carry its own momentum to actually carry the arrow off so with the 60 pound weighted target hanging in a static not moving position shot through the chronograph three times um, and got nine inches of penetration nine inches of penetration and eight and three quarters inches of penetration and that was off of um, on that test that was 160 feet per second for nine 159 feet per second for nine and eight and three quarters for 160 so obviously it's very very slight variables in there but very consistent within a, a quarter inch a difference in foam over a two you know or one feet per second difference between 159 and 160. so then we did what we would call a pendulum swing where we really got some momentum going with the target and got it swinging uh, and then we conducted the test again shooting over the chronograph shot 161 159 160 to get eight and three quarters eight and three quarters and eight and three quarters every single time and so if we lost anything which we had on the static test it was nine nine and eight and three quarters this we had eight and three quarters across the board if we did lose anything it was very 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 minute uh, likely we didn't lose anything at all um, now because the swinging target I wasn't convinced that it was going fast enough compared to an animal that is really reacting quickly to the shot then we decided to spin the target up and then let it unspin and build up speed and so it became that it was spinning rather quickly kind of like we used to do as kids on tire swings we remember we get on our bellies and twist up and then you done twist and you come out and you're all sick I mean you get whipping around really fast so this way, this mimics, say, an animal that is turning very quickly, reacting to the shot. And so I really thought that this one we were going to see some major differences because it was spinning fast and we shot again with the same feet per second range as we shot 
9 inches, 9 inches, and 8 and 3 quarter again, the same as the static test. And obviously the target was moving faster um, in the spin test than the swing test, just a different type of motion. Now the heavier arrow, the 688, we were running an average. I didn't, it, we got almost 135 every single time. It was very, very, very consistent. Uh, 135 feet per second, so I didn't write it all down up here like I did. We were just about that over the board. If we, if we went to 136 once in a while, it was once or twice, but it was very consistent across the board, but 135 average. And on the static target, we went 10 inches, 10 inches, and 10 and a quarter inches. On the swing pendulum test, we did 10 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, and 10. So kind of mirrored a little bit what we would see um, in the static test. Now in the spin test, because again it's moving uh, much faster, we did see a very, very slight difference, which we've got a 9 and 7 eighths, 9 and a half, and 9 and 3 quarter. So we did see round about a half an inch difference on average on all of those three shots and it wasn't actually just those three shots we had two other shots in which the either the chronograph gave us a false reading which one was uh, a much higher reading so I had to go going back and shooting that again um, and then the other it just had like a failed reading across it and both of those were still in that nine and three quarter range so we were very consistent with that slight drop um, in that spin. Now we would say, okay, well, it, you know, it did actually lose something because that arrow is traveling much slower. It must have uh, encountered more resistance or friction going into this moving target, you know, being taken off of its course. I don't really know a good uh, word or explanation for that. If you've got one, drop it down in the comments. I would like to know if, you know, deflecting energy, um, What's a better way to explain that? I would like to know for future reference, especially because I'm putting all of this information and much, much more in my new book, and I would like to be able to use uh, the best terminology possible on that. So thanks in advance. Um, so because we did see a very slight decrease, um, that got me thinking, well, okay, it's very easy then to look and say, well, yes, we might have lost a very, very small amount in the high-speed spin test. However, the increased um, kinetic energy and momentum from the heavier one, heavier arrow, the benefits of that momentum, despite the fact that it is moving slower and did seem to lose a very minute amount of energy through the spin test, the benefits of the kinetic energy and momentum of the heavy arrow greatly outweighed those losses. But there is a variable here within hunting that we don't really consider and that is, it's not just about the science, it's the fact that when this animal is reacting to the shot, when you have an arrow that is moving 160 feet per second versus 135 feet per second, that animal is already moving a considerable amount by the time that arrow gets there. If everything's considered equal, and I've seen this many times over, where it seems very common for archers, especially if they don't have a ton of hunting experience, but they love um, you know, data engineering or physics or anything like that. They love the idea of just saying, I want to shoot a really heavy arrow because I want to have the most penetration possible. But the problem truly is, especially when you start getting into these uh, lower contextual speeds of primitive archery where you're shooting very contextual hunting implements of wooden bows, sinew strings, primitive arrows, where the speeds are not nearly as fast as the modern uh, bow counterparts, we start running into issues of where we're shooting 135 feet per second. And while it carries the kinetic energy and momentum to penetrate, the animal has moved so much that now we can either completely miss the animal or make a bad shot on the animal. And this is something that we have observed, not just me, but a lot of my friends and associates that we hunt together, that if we have a very, very heavy arrow, we must have a very close shot as well as an animal that has absolutely no idea that we're there, which that's that's optimal anyway. And then also it helps to be like on a little bit of a windy day where they can't hear it quite as fast or as loud. It doesn't scare them to where they run. We've actually had animals at 15 yards completely get out of the way. Like a deer, multiple deer have completely jumped 
and ran out of the way before a 135 feet per second arrow has arrived to them. So that's a major problem. Now, we're shooting 150, 160 feet per second. It's getting there much faster, um, and so we have much less issue with the animal getting out of the way or reacting so heavily that we make a bad shot with the faster moving. So there is that trade-off of you shoot the lighter arrow and it gets there much faster, but you lose the kinetic energy and the momentum. However, especially through the new book that we're working on, uh, which should be out um, spring of uh, 2022, it's going to have a ton of data on there as how light can you actually go and still be efficient enough to penetrate fully through the animal. And I think the results will actually surprise you, and I'll give a little bit of spoiler to that now. If you have a fairly efficient bow, you can actually get very good penetration, you know, down to arrows weighing around 360 grains and still shooting deer-sized animals with contextually sized stone points off of sinew bow strings and wooden bows and still get the penetration on deer sized animals that you need to efficient, efficiently uh, bring them down. But of course we'll have much more of that data in the book when it comes out because there's pages and pages and pages of actual data sheets that we filled out per animal. Just like this here and all of these sheets except for a few in the back but there are so many sheets here that are animals that have data about the shot, the penetration, everything that we went out and hunted for a, a, a considerable amount of time and collected all of the data including the bow that was used, how many feet per second it shoots with a specific grain arrow and then what grain arrow we used to actually uh, shoot the animal and then the size of the point, all of that kind of information. So there'll be a ton of information in that book, lots of data so you can actually at home see what arrows you need to be shooting in order to efficiently efficiently penetrate animals the way you want to uh, be successful. So now to close out this this idea, of course, I had a great theory that we were going to see a lot more uh, loss of the energy on the fast moving targets. I really thought that we would, but the speed of the arrow coming in is just simply so fast that it's we can't say it's instantaneous, but it's incredibly fast compared to even how fast the target is spinning, the moment of impact and penetration happens so quickly that the amount that the target has moved is going a much slower pace compared to how fast the arrow is traveling. So as the arrow goes extremely fast, the targets, if you slowed everything way down, the target's moving very slow in comparison. And so realistically, we don't see a ton of difference in that. You would have to have something that was moving exceptionally fast which is going to be faster than the animals itself. So is that something you should be concerned about? I wouldn't think so. What you do need to be concerned about is not so much the loss of energy from the arrow being taken off of its trajectory. What you more need to be concerned with is an arrow going so, so slow despite carrying the kinetic energy that the animal reacts to it and either gets out of the way or turns into the arrow and you hit it square on the shoulder which really hurts penetration can absolutely stop it if you hit it on those robust bones or if it turns to run away and you get uh, a shot that runs down through the, uh, the gut somewhere which of course takes a much longer time for the animal to die and a much tougher recovery, which we always want to avoid that. So we always want to be able to get it into the heart and lungs area as fast as possible. And sometimes using a super heavy arrow isn't the best choice for that particular animal species. All right, well, thanks for following along on this today. It was just a fun little test that hopefully if you've ever had this idea like I have and you've been concerned, hopefully you see the test that we've done and you feel a lot more confident now to go out, shoot the arrows you're shooting, maybe make a change in the grain size of your arrow and go out hunting and have great success. Thanks for following along. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not already and we're going to catch you on the next adventure.